Warrior women of the Middle Ages, Joanna of Flanders is found in those pages. With Hennebont under siege by enemy forces, fiery Joanna led the 300 horses. Today, we're going to talk about the Duchess of Brittany from the 14th century. Hello again, friends. Lauren back with you. And uh, I kind of hurt my knee a little bit. Um, I sit sometimes with my legs folded under me. You really shouldn't do that because you can pop out the tendon. And even though it snaps back in when you straighten your leg, ow, it hurts. So it's not like I can do a whole bunch of fancy footwork. So we can do a video about more sword skills and cutting and all sorts of techniques and practice next week. For today, I'm going to do something for one of my best friends, Michelle. Michelle, you wanted to know about more women of the Middle Ages and are women fighting? Well, Michelle and all my friends out here, yes, we have lots of examples and not all of them make even make it to internet lists. There are a lot of names that have come across, little snippets of stories here and there. But today we're going to talk about a famous one and not Joan of Arc because that's not the story we want to talk about. Everyone wants to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about Joanna of Flanders. And I'll just quickly read just an excerpt from Jean-François Uh He wrote a lot about Joanna. And just a quick little excerpt that says, And when the lords, knights, and squires came together, there was violent conflict. The countess on that day fought like a man. She had the heart of a lion and held in her hand a sharp broadsword with which she fought valiantly. So what is this all about? Well, in 1295, Joanna was born um, in the Flemish part of what's now Belgium. And so she's Joanna of Flanders, but she's the Duchess of Brittany. She marries John de Montfort and becomes the Duchess. And there's a succession issue. And while John should be the new Duke or Count of Brittany, um, Charles de Blois, B-L-O-I-S, Blois, Blois, eh, it's a tough word to say. Um, well, he's, he and his wife are disputing and they want the succession. So it leads to war. And John is captured and, okay, Joanna's infant son is declared the leader, but of course he's an infant. He can't lead. So Joanna steps up and she takes the lead of fighting against the forces of the Blois uh, that are trying to take over Brittany. And um, we can make a joke about leave Brittany alone. Uh, that's bad. That's bad. Okay. Um, and one of the key moments is the siege of, of Hennebont. Uh, Hennebont is their kind of their, their capital city at the time. So in 1342, the city comes under siege. Charles has his forces. They're attacking. But Joanna, as a noblewoman, is out there in armor, carrying a sword. She's encouraging everyone to fight. Men, women, she tells women to cut their skirts so that they can move better. Uh, she wants them to throw rocks and pots of quicklime from the fortifications. She herself is in armor, so that would mean male. Plus, at this time, they would be supplemented by plates. She's carrying around a sword which would look very much like this, maybe a little bit wider in the blade, maybe a little bit shorter in length, a type 14, probably. Um, that's old shot typology with the Murray, but yeah, wheel pommel, straight guard. So I'm wearing a medieval dress today in honor of all of that because she basically takes over the leadership role and encourages this defense and the sieges keep failing and keep failing. So. It's going to end up having to come to starvation. But because all of the soldiers are besieging one gate, she's up in the tower, she's surveying all the things going on in the city, she realizes they have a chance. Though, Joanna, in her armor, with her sword, probably wearing a helm, maybe a kettle helm. You remember the kettle helm? This one is pretty good because you can see your face, so everyone knows who you are. See? Here? That's a pretty good helmet to wear. What do you think? I like it. I like it with a little bit of a jaunty angle as well, but probably not. She probably would have had her hair covered, not messy and wild like mine. But my hair doesn't like to be tamed, so there. So there she is. She leads 300 horsemen on a raid of the enemy camp. 
Now, since the enemy camp is empty, well, it's probably empty of soldiers. Everyone's off fighting, besieging the walls, trying to get through this gate. They leave through another gate, they sneak around, and they burn the enemy camp to the ground. And thus, she is remembered as Fiery Joanna. Because she goes and just wipes out the enemy camp. If there were any camp followers, they probably would have fled, seeing 301 horses come thundering out to the camp, and, you know, they burn it all down. Now, they're cut off from their retreat back to the city. They go off uh, to Brest in that area. Mm, geography's a little bit much, but anyway, they're able to sneak back, and this time Charles can't keep besieging the city because he's not getting anywhere. And so he's just going to surround it, and that's usually what you do in a siege, is you surround the city and you try to starve the defenders. But Joanna doesn't want to surrender. She's already appealed to the English for help. She wants to be their ally against France, because the English will support her son's claim. And since her husband is still imprisoned, that's what she needs. And of course, the English arrive. So she rallies everyone and keeps them focused. And then, still in her armor, she greets the English, Charles and his forces, well, they have to retreat. They'll go on and look for other towns to attack in Brittany, but this is what the turning point is. And eventually her son will become the next Duke of Brittany. But one of the problems that we have is that, when, that Joanna then goes off to England and she is kind of locked away. And there's some 19th century accounts that blame it on mental illness, but really, it's more, there are no, there's no evidence, there's no contemporary evidence that says she was ill. She had, you know, lots of uh, staff. She was in a castle. She had lots of people taking care of her. She had money. She could, you know, live a fairly good life. So she wasn't locked away in a cell. It was an unfortunate ending that, you know, the... Edward III, King of England, decides, well, I want to have more control over this territory and his quest to take over the French throne, uh, because that all leads back to the Norman claim from William the Conqueror back in 1066. So here we are at the, you know, we got through 1042, Joanna burned down the enemy camp. She's been an excellent military leader. They write folk tales about her. She's got a contemporary chronicler. Jean Froissart like writing lots about her and how she wields a sword and how she's fighting. There's a story of her sailing back from England one time earlier when she had gone to ask for help, how she's actually fighting a raid. The, the Spanish ships come to attack them and she's fighting with a glaive on the deck of the ship. So kind of like a long bladed pole weapon, a little bit like a spear, probably single edge, not double edge, but glaives get pretty fancy and it might have just been, you know, a, a term for spear or a type of spear used at the time. Glaive eventually gets much fancier, little bits and hooks and points, and they're awesome. But that's besides the point. But that's just one example of a woman from history documented by historians of the time, maybe misunderstood later in history, 17th, 18th, 19th century, not really focused on it as so great. And then by the 20th and 21st century, this information studies revival and there she is joanna of flanders leader of troops swinging around her sword we even have accounts of her fighting so what does that lead us are there women warriors in the middle ages well absolutely there are do they tend to be of noble birth higher status yeah um joan of arc being the peasant girl who went on to be the figurehead leader well, she certainly was the leader of armies of France against the English, but that's a rare case. A lot of the times we see that women of better positioning, especially in medieval Europe, are the ones who get to do the fighting. You know, there's a, another Joanna, the lioness, who around the same time was also fighting the French. Um, her husband had been declared a traitor and executed unfairly, or so she thought, so she had three ships and she attacked French shipping in the English Channel. Uh, her flagship was called My Revenge. Pretty cool. Uh, we know there's Catherine Sforza. There are some uh, Normans in Italy. We even have accounts uh, from, from Islamic writers uh, during the Crusades that on the Christian side that, that there were women fighting. And when they, you know, after a battle, if they went and looked at the bodies and were stripping the armor, 
and taking off the helmets that there were women. So we have all these little tidbits that we know women fought in the Middle Ages, but we know also know that it tends to be the higher status. So that was just, you know, this is my filler video for today because my, my leg hurts, my knees kind of banged up. But I wanted to tell you a story. A story about Joanna, Duchess of Brittany, fiery war leader, burning down enemy camps, riding around the countryside, fighting on a boat. All these little tidbits and details that we have of her life. And um, I think it's pretty awesome. So yeah, there are women, absolutely, who did fight in the Middle Ages. And that's always inspired me, reading these stories, to continue on in my martial arts journey, learning more sword fighting, teaching more sword fighting, and of course, doing these YouTube videos. So anyway, thanks to Michelle for the idea to do a video about warrior women, and uh, thanks to all of you for watching. I appreciate all your support. We've surpassed 350 YouTube subscribers. That's awesome. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. Do remember to like. Subscribe, you can hit the notification bell, and most importantly, comments, because that's what helps get videos done. If you want content, you talk about what you want to see, I can make videos about it. That's the way it works. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.